Hello and welcome to another one of these ADD videos. Today we're going to be looking at the difference between Gaussian and Gauss-Jordan elimination. The main difference is once you set up your augmented matrix, in this case our augmented matrix would be 1, 1, 1, 2, right? And then 2, 3, 1, 3, and then 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 6. Once you have this augmented matrix, the main difference is where you go from here. With Gaussian elimination, you go to row echelon, and you back substitute, just that in there, and Gauss-Jordan you go to reduced row echelon. And once you're in reduced row echelon, you have your solutions. There's no more work. So depending on which one you're asked, I will do it both ways here, illustrating the row operations necessary to get there uh, for practice. All right. so. The first step in this case would be to get this to be a leading one, which it already is, thank goodness. So what I'm going to be doing after that is making these two spots zeros. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do two row operations at once. I'm going to do a negative 2 times R1 plus R2 to give me a new R2. And then we're going to do a negative R1 plus R3 to give me a new R3. All right. Uh, once I do that, my new matrix that results would be this one here. The top row won't change at all, so I get a 1, 1, 1, 2. All right. And then if I were to do the row operations, the next row would become 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then 0, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 8. Okay, double check my work. The next step is to make this spot here a leading one, which we got lucky again. Um, so after that, I'm going to take the long road to reduce row echelon by showing you first how you would solve it using Gaussian elimination and taking it to row echelon. So if I'm doing just row echelon, the next step would be to make this a zero. This one up here does not matter. So in order to make that a zero, I would need to do a what? Negative, actually no, a positive 2 R2 plus R3 to get a new R3. Does everybody see that? Now, why did I switch to this one over here? Because I'm trying to make this a 0. Anytime I try to make this a 0 or this a 0, I need to use that corresponding leading one. Okay? So, um, this is Gaussian, right? So, see what happens when we pull off those numbers there. We're going to have a new matrix that results. Top row doesn't change. I didn't do anything with that row at all. So I rewrite that down. Second row doesn't change because that's my leading one row. That leading one row never changes. And then the third row is going to become a zero. That one is a zero when I do two minus 2, and then negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5, and then negative 2 minus 8 is going to be a minus 10. Alright, so finally we have a scenario in which we don't have a leading one where we need one. This 5 needs to be a leading one. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to, you can either do 1 fifth R3 to get a new R3, that's what I usually would do, 
or you could have written R3 over 5. Give me R3. It's 3 right there. Either way, that gets you what you need. Oops. Nice that. Should be one, negative one. That one should be zero. And one. This becomes what? Ooh, it should have been a negative. Right, I forgot my negative sign. This is what happens when you make your videos late. Because if it would have just been a one fifth, that would have been a negative one left over, and I need the positive leading one right there. So there's my leading one, and then that becomes a two over here. So this is row echelon form. And if you remember when you're doing um, Gaussian elimination, this is where you make your pit stop and you get off matrices, go back to X's. So what this tells me is X3 equals 2. Where did that come from? Right here, third column, right, pertains to X3. And then what is it equals 2? It's augmented, right? Anything past that line is solutions. Then after that, what do I do? Well, I come over here and I look at my second row, and I have an X2 term, and I have an X3 term. So when I use that, it's going to be X2 minus X3 equals negative 1. Does everybody see that? The coefficient of X2 came from right here. The coefficient of X3 came from right there, and then equals this. But we know what X3 equals, so we can plug in X2 minus 2, and then solve for X2. So if I add 2 on both sides, X2 will equal 1. So we have two of the three solutions. Now let's find the third. So using the top row, I have X1 plus X2 plus X3. That all came from this top row right here. And then that equals 2. Plugging in the two values that I do know, I know I have a 1 for x2 and a 2 for x3. Combine those, move it to the other side, and we get a negative 1. So what does that tell you? x1 was a negative 1, x2 was a 1, and x3 was a 2. And that would be your solution to the system of equations that was written initially. And that was using Gaussian elimination. Right? And that was because we stopped at rho echelon. Now let's take a look at the same problem using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So, let's see. I'm going to take it from this matrix here. I'm going to try to squeeze that in over there. So here I have 1, 1, 1, 2, and then it was a 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then 0, 0, 1, and 2. All right, this was our row echelon form that we stopped at with Gaussian elimination. Now what we're going to do is take this further to reduce row echelon when we're doing Gauss-Jordan elimination. So, with Gauss-Jordan abbreviation, what row operations would I need to do? Well, I would need to make these all zeros. Okay, so here I'm going to start with this corresponding leading one to make that zero and to make that zero. 
is in the same column. And the row operations for that procedure would be R3 plus R1, oop, R2, sorry, to get a new R2, and R3 times a negative 1 plus R1 to get a new R1. And when you do that, you end up with this matrix here. I can go ahead and write the bottom row because that won't change. These two numbers won't change. That should become a zero. And then what was the operation? We did a R3 plus R2. So 2 plus a negative 1 is what? 1. And then negative 1 times R3 plus that. So that's just going to change that to a zero because these two terms are both zeros. They're not going to affect, right? these ones. So you're going to have 1, 1, and then that's going to become 0. And then 2 times, or actually no, what do we have here? 2 plus 2 is 4. Did I do that right? It's getting late. So R3, no, no, it's a negative R3 plus R1. So it would be 2 minus 2, which is 0. You see how? Simple little mistake right there, and that would have been some points off. I know how to multiply, I know how to add, I know all of you know how to do the same, but if you're tired, and you're not thinking straight, it's easy to make a silly mistake. So, R2 times some number plus R3 to give me a new R3. What's that number? Well, I have 1 there, what times, or what's the opposite of that one, negative one, so it would be negative one times R2 plus R1. Why did I pick R2? Because that is the leading one for both this position and for this position. It's always a corresponding leading one on the main diagonal here, okay? So if I were to do that, I know I'm being extra careful in explaining these steps in detail. Once you actually get the hang of these, you'll be able to do them pretty quickly. Uh, unfortunately, some of them will have fractions and tedious little calculations that you'll need to make. But if you take your time, you should be fine. So that will become a zero, that will become a zero, and then one plus zero is one. And then, if you remember, the rows, I mean, the columns correspond to x1, x2, and x3. So the way you interpreted this uh, reduced row echelon form here is by saying x1 is equal to 1, x2 is equal to 1, and x3 is equal to 2. Now, something's fishy because I didn't get the same answer. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's fishy? I see my mistake. Again, fatigue is just as uh, harmful as not studying. What was the row operation here? The row operation was negative R2 plus R3. Whoa, I really am tired. See, this is the point when a student would have raised their hand and said, Don't you mean R1? And I would have said, thank you. Yes, I do mean R1. This is probably a sign that I need to quit recording for the night. But when you do a negative R2 plus a R1 to get a new R1, you get a negative 1 plus 0 is a negative 1 right there. And now they do match up their solutions, right? So let's make that negative 1. That positive one was not correct. Okay, so let that be a lesson to you. Take your time. Uh, again, what are the main steps? Well, you want to get to either reduced row echelon form or row echelon. If you're doing row echelon here, it's going to be uh, the Gaussian method of elimination. And if you do reduced row echelon, it's going to be Gauss Jordan. I personally prefer the uh, reduced row echelon form. Uh, but a couple things you need to watch out for 
uh, if you get a row of zeros a row of zeros equaling a number or not equaling but just a number in the last spot so a row of zeros and a number all in the same row that's basically telling you zero equals whatever number they have there and I'll make a video example for both of those uh, also check to see if you have some uh, matrices that are not square if it's not square that means that there's a row missing and we have to do parameters just like we would if we had rows of zeros okay um, this one would be a no solution and then we'll deal with both of those I hope things have been clarified make sure you check out the other examples with the exceptions to the rule and practice, practice, practice. Thank you and have a nice day.